This podcast is a collaboration between Costard and Touchstone Productions and the Dads from the Crypt podcast. Hi, it's Alan, and welcome to this special bonus episode of the How Not to Make a Movie podcast. In this one, we're asking a very simple question. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Earlier this season, our guest Steve D'Souza made a spirited argument for yes. Steve wrote the screenplay for Die Hard. He's thought about it quite a lot. And in fact, says Steve, not only is Die Hard a Christmas movie, it's even more of a Christmas movie than White Freakin' Christmas. I think I'll let Steve speak for himself. The curious thing is, it has become for a lot of people their go-to Christmas movie. Well, yeah, I know it, 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 it's become almost an annual thing. Um, the debate is Die Hard a Christmas movie, which has gone on for years. About five years ago, it really started to pick up steam. And then also I would get interviewed. Like you know, people would call, I would get uh, uh, requests for interviews. And sometimes uh, uh, on television, like around the country, like it'd be a slow news day Christmas. So they'd give me five minutes. And even as far away as Australia, they get in this conversation. And then the American Cinematheque did a, a screening of Die Hard, I think it's about five years ago. And they said, are you prepared to talk about it being, uh, uh, being a Christmas movie? And I said, yes, I will come well prepared, which, which I'll get to in a moment. But anyway, uh, I mean, the honest answer is, first of all, in the book, it was Christmas. It's based on a novel. And the novel is a sequel to, a, to another novel that was made into a movie with Frank Sinatra. We went through all this already. Right, right. So in the, the book, the in the detective. book, right. So in the sequel, which is called Nothing Lasts Forever, the character is is a, a now retired cop. He's sixty something years old, and he's visiting his daughter. And it is over Christmas, and the book takes place over three days. There's a lead up before he even gets on the plane. So in the interest interest of uh, you know, the compression of time, the movie is just uh, 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 dusted on. And the time timeline of the movie is a smaller right. period of time. Right. Now, Joel Silver, when we started going to the movie, we've all worked with Joel. I just saw the thing you wrote about your car ride with Joel the other day and the meeting that never happened. I endured many similar, uh, you know, waiting, in the, waiting out in the lobby for hours and hours, all that stuff. But anyway, uh, Joel said, I like that this book is Christmas. Uh, when you have a movie set at Christmas, you get plays on television every year at Christmas. So, you know, we'll always get residual checks every Christmas. In this distant era, in 1988, we didn't anticipate streaming and, you know, the 24-7, but he was right about that. So I don't think any of us thought about it as being a Christmas movie when we were shooting it until we set foot on the set, because in keeping with the idea that it's like the day before Christmas, every office is decorated with Christmas decorations. There's Christmas trees and there's like, like San, you know, all the secretaries have little Santa hats on the desk. So it was the, the flavor, you know, was was really there. And uh, we leaned in with dialogue. She says, you know, you know, it's Christmas, you know, frosty, you know, uh, Ray, you know, like you, you, it was all these remarks lead into it. Um, but then it became this phenomenon. And the other thing I noticed, and I'm going to say I don't normally check this, but somebody said, do you know the uh, the, the uh, whatever it is, the star meter on IMDb? And mm -hmm. I go, um, yeah, what? Yeah, I think I've seen that. And he says, you should look yourself up. So I look myself up and I go, wow. Holy cow, look at this. I'm like, like my, I'm like up here. Like, it's like almost like Tom Cruise level. And yeah. then but, but when you click, when you click on it, it's like this week, right? So then I, then I widen out and I realized that I'm a flatline my entire life, but I, but I jump up like between Thanksgiving and Christmas because of all the appearances in the press. Right. Of his right. Die Hard a Christmas movie. So my, so I get mentioned like side stream smoke, you know? So, so I, so, but for a moment, for a moment, I, I exceed well Eric Estrada, I guess, on the uh, on on the on the spike. So well, anyway, uh, uh, Fabo meter. Well, right. The song, the, the song at the end helped a great deal too, didn't it? Oh yeah. Well, the, the, well, it was, it, I'm glad you mentioned songs because when I went to the American Cinematheque, he said, "Are you prepared? Are you, are you prepared to talk about? Is it a Christmas movie?" And I said, "I get asked so often now, and I've done so many like interviews in print and on." Uh, uh, on uh, FaceTime on television stations and things that I've got all the answers. So I prepared a little chart. So what? let me tell you how it goes at Cinematheque and anytime I do any of these things. They'll say, is it a Christmas movie? And I'll say, how many people think it's a Christmas movie? Now the number has gone up over the screenings. Like maybe five years ago, it was 50-50. Now it's creeping up. 
So I'd say, well, before we decide if it's a Christmas movie, we need some kind of baseline. Okay. Can we all agree that White Christmas is a Christmas movie? The classic musical uh, with uh, Bing Crosby and uh, Danny Kaye and Vera Even Ellen. Even has it in the title. How much more help, help, right, help right. do you need? Everyone agrees. I say, okay, I will now approve Die Hard is more Christmassy than White Christmas. Oh, excellent. I have a handy chart here. Oh, can, can, we, can we read this? Maybe I should probably to prove it. Can you see it here? No, oh, I, we I can't, one. but but we'll we'll you'll you'll take a I'll, picture. I'll, 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 I'll PDF. I guess I have, to, I have to stand up and do a show and tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's right. fantastic. Oh, okay, right. that that's that's amazing. Here, we get this right here. I'll put it in the armrest. I I uh, hang on a second here. I love the idea of having this debate. Like Christmas movie or not, checklist. Die Hard <laughs> it takes place during the Christmas holiday. The entire movie. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair White enough. Christmas. Only the first and final scenes take place during Christmas, ten years apart. Huh. Right. Because remember, the beginning is World War Two, and the end, yes. and then they become big stars on Broadway. And the yeah. end of the movie is a reunion of the old soldiers. I think it's ten or eight years later, whenever the movie comes out. So yeah. we're already more Christmassy by the entirety of the movie. Boy, wow, hundred okay. percent. Well, yeah, not hundred percent, but, but okay. The setting of Die Hard is a Christmas party right white christmas only the final scene is a christmas party <laughs> right mm -hmm. they come out snow 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 so right yeah 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 number of christmas songs die hard has four let it snow winter wonderland christmas and hollis and jingle bells white christmas has only two white christmas and snow <laughs> party venue threatened in Die Hard, the party ven venue is threatened by terrorists. In White Christmas, the party venue, the the, uh, the the resort, is threatened by foreclosure. Right. Right. That's why they have to have the reunion there to save it. There's a broadcaster with a hidden agenda. In Die Hard, it's Dick Thornburg. In White Christmas, it's Johnny Grant. Who they do not who who keeps it a secret that the, that it's a Christmas party when he televised it. It's a to me this guy dead solo. Remember the, the, right. the end the party right, is right, broadcast. Right. Okay. The party is broadcast secretly. Government incompetence. And to die hard, the FBI over overreacts. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. In White Christmas, the Pentagon fires General Waverly. Okay. Right, he's the old commander who now runs the resort. The German ringleader in, in Die Hard is Hans Gruber. Well, of course. The German ringleader in White Christmas is Hitler. In the opening scene. Yeah, <laughs> the ringleader. Yes. Right. Fair enough. The body count. Well, this is where a lot of people, when I get in the movie, and I'll make the argument, you know, without the chart, it can't be a Christmas movie. All those people get killed. And I say, well, how many people get killed? Anyone know? I know. Twenty-three people get killed. In Die Hard, and that that is the number. It's, it's that is the number that that is the innocent victims. Uh, you know the security guards, uh, even the FBI, in the people in the helicopter, and of course all but one of the all but one of the terrorists who are, who are all but two of the terrorists who are who are the invaders who are killed. Okay, uh, uh, two of, two of them are knocked out. Okay, uh, and the oh, so we have a twenty three people body count, and a White Christmas is twenty six thousand one hundred and twenty eight. <laughs> the body count in the Battle of the Bulge, which is the opening scene of the movie, remember, the scene is interrupted by uh, artillery barrage. <laughs> and finally, what is the gift of the Magi like selfless sacrifice? You always want in something. Sure, of there. course, of course. In Die Hard, he runs across barefoot across broken glass. Right? It's very like symbolic. Yes, yes, yes. In White Christmas, Danny Kay upgrades Vera Ellen's train ticket. He gives her his first class ticket. That's the supple sacrifice. Does not compare. So if you look at this, it's incontestable with empirical data here that Die Hard is more Christmassy than White Christmas 
I rest my case, and I'll provide you a PDF of uh, of that chart for your website. You know, the I, the only quibble I have is that is that last piece, the the, the comparing running over broke broken glass to an upgraded uh, uh, airplane ticket. Because I, I if I had to fly Spirit, I I would rather run over broken glass. <laughs> okay, right. It, yes, yeah, it, 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 is, it is like running over a broken glass. Yeah, yeah. there you go. There you have it. Die Hard is more of a Christmas movie than White Christmas. Fight us. Good to see you next time. The How Not to Make a Movie podcast is executive produced by me, Alan Katz, by Gil Adler, and by Jason Stein. Our artwork was done by the amazing Jody Webster, and Jason and Jody, along with Mando, are all the hosts of the fun and informative Dads from the Crypt podcast. Follow them for what my old pal, the Crypt Keeper, would have called terrific Crypt content. <laughs>